Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> little, little technical difficulty. This is Reverend Letty Carr, and I'm happy to be back with the 316 prayer line today. Excited because we have a special guest that I'm going to introduce to you, a young lady that I've gotten to know over the years, um, who is a blessing to the body of Christ. Um, again, we always start at 316 p.m. because we know that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So every day, Lord woman, at 3.16 p.m., we pray, and we believe God hears our cries. We want to thank you for joining us, as usual. Um, it's our pleasure to serve daily and, and to with you each day. Uh, we want to open with a word of prayer, as usual, and then we will um, hear from my guest. So um, I want to turn to something. You might want to beat yourself to the brother. Um, let's see here. Psalm 51, verse 1 says, Have mercy upon me, O God according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out tr my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus, acknowledging that, Lord, we have fallen short. We have, Lord, sinned against you. We ask you, Lord, to have mercy upon us and hear our cry. We acknowledge you as our Lord, our Savior, our Father, our great I am, the one who is and was and is to come, creator of heaven and earth. You are almighty God. And we come to you, God, because your word says we can come. You said, ask and we will receive. You told us to seek when we would find and knock and the door would be answered. So we come, God, asking in the name of Jesus and believing and trusting that you're hearing our cries today and that indeed, Lord, you're forgiven our sins in Christ Jesus. Your word tells us we're cleansed and we come because we want to acknowledge whatever we've done before you, that we might agree with you, God, and that there be nothing that hinders or, or in any way causes a division between us and you and our conscience even, Lord God. We bless your name. We ask you now to hear our cries in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I was saying, we have a young lady with us here to be on. Amen. There's a young lady who was is a person, um, part of the dance ministry at Church of Redeemed, uh, where I was pastoring at the time. And she uh, continues to minister and dance at her current church. But she also was a part of a war room we set up. And so many things happened in that war room. When we had papers or anything you can imagine, um, support documents and all kinds of uh, pictures of people who were sick and all kinds of requests that were put up. And God began to just show up in a miraculous way. And one day we prayed together and just God just blew our minds. So I wanted her to come and share her story about how they for her. Come on, I can share her story. Hi there, everyone. I'm Bianca Coleman and I'm sharing my testimony. Thank you, Chat, for letting me to allow me to come and just share. Um, so as she said, we had set up a war room in a gym. And I remember that week, it was Holy Week, and I had, I had written in my, um, my diary, it was March 23rd, 2016. Wow. And I remember we were there, and we were praying, and I remember, you know, I'm praying, sometimes I pray with my glasses on. I, I remember praying, and we were sitting there praying, and I looked up, and I had my glasses on, and I opened my eyes and it was like I could not see through my glasses. I was like, what in the world is going on? What's happening? So I'd taken my glasses off and I was blinking and then I remember like seeing God like stirring the atmosphere. That's what I remember seeing. And then we I remember at that specific moment we were praying for families and their addictions within their family like family members. I remember that specifically. But the thing was 
I could see clearly without my glasses versus my glasses being on. So I was kind of confused. I was like, what is happening here? You know? And I remember I never asked for any healing of my eyes or anything like that. I never asked. But when I was sitting there and I was blinking and I was looking around and I left out, you know how sometimes you're sitting in a place and you're thinking, okay, things are, are, are weird or what, whatever is going on, right? Things are happening. Something weird is going on, right? right? But what happened was when I left out, when I left out of that gym and things were brighter and things were like so much clearer, I was like, wow, oh my goodness, what is, what is happening here? I can actually see. And I remember God telling me that in my presence, you can see clearly. You can hear clearly without without blockage and you can move freely in my presence. That was the specific words that he had given me. And I was just like, wow, wow, God, you know? So what made it crazy was that I went to go get my eyes checked at the eye doctor there. And the doctor was checking my eyes and he said, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? He said, did you get LASIK surgery? And I'm looking at him like, where am I going to get LASIK surgery from? <laughs> you know, what's, where am I going to get LASIK surgery from? So he's like, you, you got LASIK surgery. And I'm just like, no. So I left out of there with a lower prescription than I've ever had. I have glasses on right now, but my prescription is way lower than what it ever was. So I'm like, okay, you, you, you can't, you can't, take the glasses off completely because it's a reminder. It's a reminder to me every time. And whenever I'm dancing, whenever I'm dancing, I, I could see clearly, I could take my glasses off and I could see clearly. I never, if you see me, I'm never dancing with glasses on. It's just like, I, I don't even like to dance with shoes on because it just feels weird to me. I don't care if it's the dirtiest floor. I will never dance with shoes on unless they tell me I have to. It's just, it's like, it's holy ground. And in his presence, I can see clearly. I remember, uh, well, looking at Psalm 34, eight, it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good mm. right so I thought about that and I was thinking to myself okay taste why did he say taste and see right and I thought about the you can eat without tasting you can eat just to eat but to taste is an expectation of an encounter I have an expected end to this 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 uh encounter with whatever it is that that's happening so I believe that in that scripture, when he's saying, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? He's saying en it engages everything. It engages all of your senses to see that he is good. Not only that, whenever you've tasted something, you can't untaste it. Like, you can't give me beef and tell me it's chicken. Right. You, you begin to know that thing through tasting. And I believe that day with that encounter, I tasted and saw that he was good beyond what it was that was that was going on but beyond what it was that i saw in the natural he allowed me to taste in the spirit and see that hey i'm doing way more than you can ever you don't have to ask me i'm just going to show you a little bit of who i am i'm mm -hmm. going to allow you to see me in a different in a different light than you've ever seen me amen and it changed it changed my life from that that point on i i, I i'm just like you know it's one thing to say that okay we know that he's a healer, but it's one thing to experience. That's right. It. We know that he's a deliverer, but it's one thing. It's, it's, it's another thing when he actually delivers you out of something. Amen. Then you know him in the sense of, okay, I know that my God is a deliverer. He's a healer and everything else. He said, I am the great I am. That encompasses to me everything. Everything that I'm ever searching for, looking for. He is the great I am. Fill in the blank. <laughs> so that is my testimony and I, I thank you again for allowing me to come and just share my testimony with you all hey amen that's a powerful testimony I didn't remember all the details I just remember you saying I can see <laughs> <laughs> 
but it was an atmosphere is what I believe that brought that healing about. We had been praying, as you said, it was the Holy Week. We had saturated the atmosphere. We were praying two, three times a day, crying out to God for different healings and deliverances and breakthroughs in people's lives. And on that particular day, as she said, we were praying for families and deliverance from addictions and generational curses that were in families. And God saw fit in the midst of that atmosphere to change her vision so that she literally could see better without her glasses at that moment than she could with her glasses. So when the doctor asked her if she'd had LASIK surgery, of course the answer was no, but God has showed up. And, and one of the reasons that he, I believe, allowed her to experience that was because we created an atmosphere where he was welcome to operate. We pray, we pray, we pray, we call down heaven and earth. And that's why as you saturate even in your own home, a consecrated area, just like here, I have my prayer wall. I have my um, prayer request here. I try to create an atmosphere in which God can operate so that when we pray, something happens. So we praise God for what he did in your life, Bianca. Thank you for sharing that powerful testimony. And so, saints, we want to go before the Lord in faith, knowing that he is hearing our cries. And just like he answered, even what we didn't ask for, he did exceedingly and abundantly above all we asked or thought. We believe he's going to do the same for us today. So let's begin to pray. All participants are muted. Oops. I did it backwards. All participants are unmuted. There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Thank you for your prayers, uh, for hearing our prayers each day, God. Thank you for blessing us each day. Thank you, God, for even touching and healing Bianca's eyes, Lord. Great is your faithfulness, Almighty God. We come lifting up every heart, every mind, every prayer concern, even on this prayer wall, God. I lay my hands that you would move in a miraculous way, touching lives and break, bringing breakthrough, bringing healing, God, and deliverance as only you can in the name of Jesus. You know every name, every circumstance, and every situation, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over every person represented on this line, oh God, and over their families, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you know every situation, and you know every heart's cry. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all we've asked or thought. We plead the blood of Jesus over every family, God, and particularly generational curses. We cry out, God, for deliverance. We counsel every assignment of the enemy against our families and against our lives, even addictions, God, in the name of Jesus. We curse every curse that they will bear no more fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our hospitals and over the doctors and nurses and caregivers across the land, God. All those who are involved with the respiratory care of others, Lord, and the healing of others in whatever capacity, whether it be through their dietary department, whether it be through their radiation department, whatever they're called, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives and over their families' lives. We pray, God, for caregivers wherever they are throughout the land, in homes, in respiratory uh, respite centers, Lord God, in nursing homes and rehab centers. We plead the blood of Jesus, God, that every worker would be covered and cared for. And then we cry out for the sick, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would break yokes. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we cry out, Holy One. For those who are struggling with leukemia, those who are struggling with diabetes, we cry out for healing. Those who have hypertension, we cry out for healing. Those who are struggling with COVID-19, lupus, Lord, we cry out for healing. We feed the blood of Jesus over every body, God, that their bodies would be made whole. In Jesus' name is our cry. Do a work, Holy One, as only you can. Turn situations around as only you can. Break yokes as only you can. Destroy the work of the enemy, God, as only you can in the name of Jesus. There is nothing too hard for you, Almighty God. We know you are well able. Hallelujah. I cry out for Doris Emmanuel today. I ask you to stretch forth your hand to heal her body in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I thank you for Mr. Jacobs, God, and his restoration. Going home, bless him, keep him, God. 
continue to work on his body and let him be made whole in the name of Jesus. I cry out for Asia Thomas that they touch her body, heal her completely, God. Drive out every man of sickness and disease. I cry out for Tiana today, God. Touch her, heal her, God. Break every yoke, destroy every uh, work of the enemy in her body, in her life, in the name of Jesus, Almighty King. We know there's nothing too hard for you, Almighty God. We ask you to turn the situation around, even with this young lady, God. Who has had cert? I mean, who's been in this car accident even today? Lord, you know the situation. I'm asking you to touch her body in Jesus' name. You know all about it, God. And I know you are able to heal her in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just plead the blood of Jesus over every person under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Bianca, would you pray for us now? Well, Father God, I thank God for this time, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that we can just come into your presence, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing, Lord God, that we don't know that you're doing, Father God. I just ask, Father God, that everybody out there, the sound of my voice, Lord God, Lord God, that, that today, Lord God, they encounter you in a different way, Lord God. They encounter you in a special way, Lord God. Lord God, show everybody exactly who you are, Lord God, even in these times, Lord God. I pray, Father God, for those who are struggling, Lord God, in every sense of the world of struggling, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you just you just show up and show out, Lord God. We know that our timing, Father God, is not your timing, Lord God, but you are always right on time, Father God. So we just want to thank you in advance, Father God, for the things, Father God, that are to come. Lord, thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for the things that are to come, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit, Lord God. Allow us, Father God, to see in the spirit, Lord God. Allow us to call those things that be not as though they were, Father God. Allow us to live out our faith, Lord God, make it part of our lifestyle, Lord God, so that those that don't know you, Father God, will look at us, Father God, and begin to know exactly who you are and ask, what must I do, to, Father God, to be saved? will come to you, Lord God, in, 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 in their humble way, Lord God. And we just thank you, Father God. We thank you. We count all things done, Lord God. We count all things done, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for the prayer. Thank you for the testimony. We want to make sure that if anyone who has heard us today, knows Jesus. If you're here and you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, we want to make sure you have relationship with him today. How do you do that? It's very simple. All you have to do is ask him to come into your life and he will. He stands at the door and knocks is the word, what the word of God says. And if anybody opens up, he'll come in. So today we encourage you and we invite you to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you want to rededicate your life, you come to a place where you uh, recognize you got off track with God. You want to rededicate. Now is the time to do that as well. How do you do it? Very simple. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you will repeat this prayer after me and believe it in your heart, the word of God says you shall be saved. So let us pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control. I turn from my sins and I turn to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you for saving my soul. Amen. Praise God. The word of God said, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you made that confession, you prayed that prayer, you are saved. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You are a child of the most high God. And we thank God for you. We always get excited when people give their lives to Christ. Or if God does anything in your life, we love hearing testimonies. So we would love to hear from you. You can hit me up at Rev Letty Carr at whosoeverbelieves.org. That's R E V 
L E T T I E C A R R at whosoever believes dot O R G all one word. I would love to hear from you, pray for you, encourage you in the things of God. Know that we thank God for each and every one of you who joins us each day. It's just a blessing. 